two general things, that, categories of information I want to make sure that we share today or that we talk about today. One, um, building on this whole notion of uh, behavior driving, uh, driving change. Over the course of this last three years inclusive uh, of today, we've gone from individual behavior, awareness and assessment and you know, beginning to carve out those personal action plans. Last year talking about organizational change, how we shifted that, okay, we're preaching to the choir, how do we then bring that back and get others um, to be able to embrace that change and do something about it um, to where we have moved. And this year, uh, I wanna talk a little bit about three things, lesson, um, which is generally uh, the theme, some work that we're doing uh, local to New York, and, and I'm going to cite just one example of uh, one of our member companies that's, uh, that's very active um, in that. So bottom line, as we talked about earlier, um, impacting behavior change. Mark, this goes right to your point of the, uh, of the cycle of communication flow. Measurement and capturing information about a building um, based on the behavior of its tenants its design, its structure, how it fits in a, in a neighborhood, all of those fun kind of things. At the, at, the end of the, at the end of this, hopefully this will make a little more sense than um, maybe it does now. The idea is if it's a poorly performing building, it has no place in the market. So that's a pretty fundamental behavior change kind of a thing to, you know, to, to put out there. Oh, it's a great looking building. It's a, designed as a highly, highly energy efficient building but it turns out it's an energy hog because, you know, any number of reasons, guess what? The market's not going to support it is the proposition that, uh, or the hypothesis that a number of the uh, members of the commercial real estate industry, industry will support. Um, and a little bit of what lesson is going to show um, will bear that out. Um, so I probably could do this on my own if I took individual inventory. Show of hands, those who are not members of ULI in the room. Okay, good. Um, so there's the, it's not the advertising uh, so much as it is the rest of the people in the room are what ULI is. Okay, the, this whole idea of exchanging information, be able to come together and demonstrate uh, best practices using a case study kind of a format, uh, being part of a research, uh, overall research organization that's going to get um, information out there for people to put to use in a way that's contextually relevant for their company is what we're all about. Um, so again, some of the things that, uh, that we provide, um, and I'm just going to highlight um, one of these in particular, and that is the idea of the councils, the information exchange. Um, Russell, Younger, uh, Russell Unger and the others who are here from Urban Green Council and, uh, and USGVC, um, we, we, we co-mingle a lot in this, this space. Um, it's all about green, sustainability. It's all about coming together and sharing information providing education for our members um, or for anyone else who comes to and is part of the audience. And so it's a, it's a very vibrant discussion at that intersection. How we apply it and to whom it applies is often only as different as the members who show up at those, but it is, uh, it, this is entirely appropriate for a, a forum like this to be able to come together and share those kinds of ideas. So the communication strategies, um, again, that, were, uh, um, that Mark referenced before, Jonathan had mentioned last night, I'm going to go through a couple of these um, just to showcase some examples of that uh, because it all fits into this context of capturing data, measuring, figuring out what to do with those metrics, and then turn around and putting that to some practical, relevant, um, uh, in, in some relevant way in the market. So um, first thing I want to, um, to talk about amongst those is this whole idea of collaborative communication, one of those strategies that was... Uh, Part of what I hope is a relatively mature communication cycle, and this is something that we do in New York um, called the Sustainable Building Council. Um, Ann mentioned it last night. Um, Ann Fletcher and Patty Connolly um, are the co-chairs of our Sustainable Building Council in New York. Uh, we have meetings not quite this size. It would be, you know, maybe two or three tables of this. Um, but what's interesting about these meetings on a fairly regular basis, we come together, share the common uh, mission of better understanding how we can make all of this sustainable stuff work. Um, and a number of you who are members of the Sustainable Building Council will recognize that at any given meeting, sort of depending on who our featured speaker is, we can have upwards of, and in fact have had at times in excess of 200 million square feet of Class A commercial office space sitting around the table. It's an interesting dynamic, as you guys can I hopefully, uh, hopefully appreciate, to have 
people who are competitors and won't talk to each other, let alone can't, by the time they get off the elevator and they leave the meeting, um, but they're sitting and they're hashing out the kind of things that we're talking about here. You know, you sort of have to go away on a two or three days worth of a retreat in order to be able to flush those ideas out. We've embraced that, and this is part of my, my personal action plan over these last couple of years has been to embrace that and bring it into fruition. Um, and very excited to be able to watch that um, mature, mature over the course of these uh, last several years really intensely in this last year, and that's where we've formalized the mission and come up with the, um, the topics that we, uh, that we generally get to discuss. Using because again, and it's because our members are the ones who define this, and I think that's the most important piece of this. You know, this isn't ULI sitting back and, you know, sort of an ivory tower going, oh, I think these are some interesting things we ought to be talking about. You know, the nice thing for me was to be able to convene a, to be able to be part of convening a meeting and then the result of that meeting was the steering committee for our Sustainable Building Council coming together and saying, these are the things we want to talk about. And everything that we do relates to these topics. So a way, um, one of the companies that we have who's a member of that, just to pick on one, um, is Heinz. Um, Heinz has a green office initiative. Um, Heinz Go, as you can see it uh, referred to on here. These are a couple of the things, that, the ways that they measure their appeal in the marketplace. And it's interesting, two years ago, none of these statistics would have been anywhere near. Ken Hubbard might have been talking about them here, but no way in the world this shows up on a website. And all of this is very public, publicly available information, um, you know, owing to the, the kinds of things that have matured, again, over, um, over the last several years are measurable, they're tangible, people really get them. You guys all understand this. You'll look at that and it's like, well, what's the big deal? The big deal is the brokerage community, for the most part, wouldn't touch any of this stuff two years ago. No way in the world anybody, oh, another lead building, really? What color is this one going to be? Right? And that's not the kind of thing that, you know, that had been interesting. Investors are paying attention to it and are, and are making it part of their investment criteria or their evaluation as, across a portfolio, so on an asset-by-asset -asset basis. You know, Heinz is a good example of that, and there are some others that, uh, that we can address as well. Um, another thing that um, has changed behavior, um, anybody watch TV every so often, the, the, big lose, the Biggest Loser? I think that's what it was called, right? The Biggest Loser. It was a, not something I watch a lot. It's a weight loss program. Um, in this, thank you for laughing. Um, in this context, it was EPA um, had been part of um, the Biggest Loser program. It was designed around energy efficiency, and it was a reduction uh, program. Um, Andrew Cook um, and Rosemary um, Subasic, who are both active members in our Sustainable Building Council, Andrew was showcased a number of different places to include showing up on NBC, um, where the building that they submitted, actually fourth on the list here, um, 522 Fifth Avenue, um, you can't, it's not necessary that you read them from back here. The important part is that all of the energy consumption curves are all pointed in the correct direction. Um, and the idea is that took on a metric-based management system to be able to more effectively figure out how energy plays a part in the life of a building, how tenants interact in the life of a building, and therefore clearly understanding who's using the energy and who's not, um, and, and then measure, that, measure it and then manage it to, to some effective endpoint. Um, and the endpoint here is that the winner of this, I believe, Salon Health is the fourth one from the bottom 200, no, let's see. Well, here we are. Let's focus on 522 Fifth Avenue. Um, 1,038 metric tons greenhouse gases uh, prevented. Um, you can see some of the others uh, you know, that are listed there. It's a big deal. You know, this is an office building. It's a multi-tenanted office building where you don't get to tell tenants what to do. They got to work with the tenants. Tenant education was a big part of this. Um, and it was all based on measure and manage. Measure and manage. Here's another uh, tool, and this was the original topic. Um, the other reason I wasn't really all that excited behind going behind Mark, as much as you hate PowerPoint, try giving somebody else's. Um, so we're going to talk for a couple of minutes now about the idea of Lesson, um, which is, a, anybody here heard of or used Lesson? So a couple of folks who have. Um, so I don't carry a smartphone with me because it would make my microphone buzz in lots of fun ways, but um, Lesson is basically a data visualization tool that allows one to be able to understand where the building that you're looking at 
fits on, in relative terms, fits on a chart like what you see here. It's an energy efficiency of a building, a building performance metric that is designed to be able to give anyone who has an interest in the building a sense of where they are, where they stand, it allows you to do some relatively gamey kind of comparative analysis to give you a sense of, oh, I think I'd rather talk to the folks in that building, you know, to find the 10,000 square feet I'm looking for for my, you know, for my office. Why? Because they fit, you know, in the upper left quadrant of this, uh, you know, of the chart as opposed to in the um, hideously dark red corner. So uh, this is not something, there's not going to be a test on this. I will tell you that these are the overall, um, the, the theme behind everything that's listed in here is a, it's about everything that Mark just finished mentioning, that is engaging people to have them take action, right? The whole idea is they want to walk up to a building. If you know you have a choice between, to use the lesson um, metaphor, a green building, you know, something that's got an A or B kind of a rating, and you're then looking at something that, you know, right next to it is one of those soon to be not legal in the market buildings. The hope is you have the ability to rationally go, hmm, let's see, tough decision, right? It's when you're in the, in sort of in the murky area, a couple of D buildings, you've got different kinds of decisions to make. But it's a different kind of an evaluation than when a broker goes and finds a space for you and it's a $40 a foot space and here's a $42 a foot space. Because if that's all it was, if those are the only two things that you had to compare one to the other, everything else is exactly the same. You know, I, I think we've heard enough anecdotal um, discussion so far as to you know, how that decision might go. But if that $42 space is the B building and the $40 space is the D building, it's a different kind of a decision. All right, so part of what drives this though, and this comes back to the, uh, to the, um, the whole communication cycle, um, you know, the idea of starting out with, regula with regulation. This is, Mark, to your point of ending with um, a, new, a new social norm having been set, or a new social norm in the case of, um, in the UK, uh, literally earlier this month, um, they've passed a law that makes it illegal to attempt to and move into an illegal contractually binding way into a building that's not an energy performance, doesn't meet an energy performance standard. Now, I don't remember all of the demographics in here, but Matt, what do you suppose the opportunities are there in Brooklyn, in South Brooklyn, if you were to turn around and say, gee, that building's not in strict compliance across every possible way, but it's okay, you're gonna rent it anyway. They're no changing that behavior, right? And that's, at the end of the day, gamey, toy kind of, you know, simplistic in its, in its approach, at the end of the day, it's a very powerful message when you turn around and say, you can't move into that energy hog. So that's a market changer. All right. I um, think it's important to recognize that there's an awful lot of this going on. There's another slide I have. It's actually much more complicated that talks to the, uh, to the GPIC partnership. Literally, the Department of Energy, uh, we had a pre they were our last featured speaker for the Sustainable Building Council in New York. And, you know, we got to hear a lot about the National Building Performance um, Data Warehouse, um, the compilation of all kinds of data, attributes still yet to be defined. I mean, there's all kinds of things going on. There's a lot of people collecting a lot of data. How we represent that and how that's positioned is really what the idea here, and this is a couple of things that have been written down, that I wrote down in the communication strategy so far, are about simplifying them, making it as simple as you can. You've got a core message, hit the message, hit it hard, right? I mean, this was one of those things that, you know, keep it simple, couldn't have come across more clearly, um, you know, in the way that um, Eden House has been able to be effective. Um, so lots of different inputs, lots of different ways to be able to look at a building. Um, I'm not going to make you go through the acronym soup on this. That's the quiz John McElwain's going to give after dinner. Um, so talk a little bit about, um, real quickly, the, the idea of lesson Disinformation, misinformation, this particular example, um, the parliamentary uh, um, offices, two years they went without someone understanding how to read their new smart meter. And so for two years they paid exactly twice the amount that they were legally obliged to 
cost, I mean, you know, this is a taxpayer, well, not a big deal, it's just in there, right? It's just in the federal budget. It's a really big deal when you start broadening that. Yesterday, Jonathan was talking about the military and Walmart being the two largest energy users and being more progressive than others. Broadly speaking, the federal government, fairly significant landowner, right? Fairly significant leaseholder in the, in the context of the U.S. government. If Eleni reads 9,200 buildings, I think it was about that, 9,600 in that ballpark, if she's paying twice what she needs to by the time all is said and done, we as taxpayers ought to be at least horrified by that. That's, that's what gave rise to, it's one of the things that gave rise to um, the notion of, of Lesson, a data visualization tool that allows you to be able to go and at its core change behavior relative to a building. I want the building I'm in to be more energy efficient. I want the building that I'm in to be able to um, allow me the opportunity to see op opportunities, obstacles that lead to learning opportunities. John, I think is the way you described it before. No different having a building have its own personal action plan, right? The idea is to be able to say, here's an opportunity to be able to change the, the behavior in a building, whether it's through tenant information, whether it's through training of the staff of a building, uh, whatever that might be. Um, so Lesson has this at its, uh, at its core. A couple, uh, couple of quick screenshots for you so that you can get a sense of the kinds of resources that are available for, uh, for the users of Lesson. Um, one of the points I'd like to, point, uh, to make here is that this is traditional web-based. It's also social media based as the opportunity to be able to, to feed, you know, people are commenting back all the time, they're tweeting um, about a building, oh, I just went to go look at 14 St. Mary's Way, Route 9D in Garrison, New York, and it's a, I don't know, what would you say, light green, energy efficiency wise? Uh, no, it's very green. All right. This has a geothermal system. These are actually compact fluorescences. There you go. But most of these has operable windows and daylight. So. So come by here and, and where the data loaded for this, uh, for this building, you'd be able to see it. Um, and there would be, surely this group amongst them would be commenting on that, uh, on that very issue. Um, so again, this, this just looking to, uh, to get home the point of, um, and when the PowerPoint's available to you, you can go and click on the YouTube and you can watch the videos yourself. So otherwise you'd have to listen to them and go back and forth. Not gonna do that. Um, but the idea here is really about empowerment. Right? The whole idea is to be able to make better decisions about how you interact with the building, whether you're a tenant, or a prospective tenant, prospective investor, an asset manager, whatever that, whatever that might be. And again, the, the point to, to be raised here relative to Lesson is, Lesson is coming to the U.S. We're in the process of coming. They made a big presentation last week um, at the ULI Spring Council Forum in Phoenix. Um, we have... Last count, 40,000 buildings in, uh, in, the, in Europe um, whose data are loaded to, uh, to lessen. Um, so that when you get around to seeing the depiction, you see on the left the energy, the energy certificates that, uh, or the, the lesson indicators, um, that's more realistic than, uh, than where we are yet in the US. But in the process of, uh, of rolling that out, again, as a data visualization tool. One of the big ways, uh, one of the big implementation hurdles that we've overcome um, in the use of and adoption of Lesson um, has been through schools. There have been several school systems in the, uh, in the UK um, and in, uh, in London, but um, in particular, but also uh, around, the, uh, around Great Britain that have adopted the, uh, the data uh, input requirements um, and have, have yielded that data in, in such a way that it's really helped get a better understanding so when we come around to USGBC schools kinds of issues there's a that's there's got to be something that you've gotten to see a, a lot of right um, so a couple of articles that uh, that highlight that um, big piece here between the the partnership with Aero um, and you know and the others the the please stick me um, piece that you see here this is all about the other complementary components of um, tenant education, tenant outreach, uh, user, prospective user, um, education and awareness, right? The whole idea is it's not just about whether you've got the smartphone app and you can hold it up and go, oh look, it's a green building. Um, it's what else you do with it and how you, and how you go about interacting with that. Uh, not to be dismissed in the whole um, question, one of the things, somebody was laughing at me yesterday, they saw over my shoulder I was writing 
you know, do buildings use energy or do the people within them use the energy? Um, you know, at the end of the day, if you build a building and you don't put any people in it, it probably shouldn't be that much of an energy hog. Besides the energy insult it took to be able to construct it in the first place, there's nobody in it. it probably shouldn't be using a lot of energy. So we probably shouldn't forget about the tenants. And that's one of the things that we, dis we discussed in the context of, uh, of ULI programmatically, um, and in New York in particular, is that whole relationship between the tenants and the, uh, and the landlords. So again, we get down to the, um, you know, some of the very specific issues. In this case, I'm talking about the public sector, and it was this awareness is what led to the recently adopted um, legislation in, uh, well, from London. And do I need to say more about the Empire State Building? Everybody has enough of an understanding about what's going on with that. Folks from London told me, please don't show that slide again. So um, I'm going to go back and tell her that I did anyway. Um, so again, you know, all of these are, you know, our summary slides. We, they all get down to the, the whole idea of the human element, giving them a, a better chance to understand building, its context, its reference, in this case, um, from, a, from a performance perspective of energy um, utilization and how it relates to the rest of the market. So again, context. I'm not going to try and convince anybody to join lesson. That's not the purpose here. Um, so that's where, that's where I'm going to end um, now.